Hey, what is up everybody? This is Katakus, and today we're going to be focusing on something very simple. It won't be a long video. We're going to focus on recording our MIDI instruments, or MIDI like keyboards and whatnot, into our tracks, and the easiest way to get your audio recordings from the MIDI uh, into your uh, songs without taking up all of your audio tracks, uh, as well as not having to manage all your MIDI gear. Uh, so this is just something that's quick and easy. It's not something you want to use if you're going to like uh, like do filter sweeps and stuff with your MIDI gear, like if you want each sequence to like change. Uh, this is more like making a 4 bar or 8 bar or 16 bar, however many bars you want. It's about making a recording of your MIDI gear playing and then putting that back into your track as an audio recording so then you don't have to manage all your MIDI gear. So uh, I'm going to flip the camera around, I'm going to show you which gear I'm working with and then I'm going to show you how to do it nice and easily, okay? So let's turn this around and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, here we are. So starting obviously with the MPC Live, this will of course work with an MPC One and an MPC X, okay? So with my MPC Live here, uh, then over here I've got my Poly Brute, that's what I'm going to be sequencing and then recording into the track. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's start over here. Here we've got track six. Track six I've set it up to actually, well track six is actually already has a recording in it. So what we're gonna do is, I'm first gonna show you on track five, Oops. On track five, I've called this MIDI bass. Um, and there's a reason for naming different tracks like bass or MIDI bass or whatever. Is because when I actually export this song, um, I don't, or, or when I play it, I don't want the MIDI tracks to play anymore once I've got the audio recording in there. Unless I want to hear my MIDI like gear and play around with the filter sweeps and, and different settings on the knobs while I'm just playing it. Or like a live scenario, you might want to have your MIDI tracks playing your gear instead of using the audio recording. So it's good to keep your MIDI tracks in there, just keep them muted and they're no longer a part of the song, but keep them in there so that you have that data just in case you want to do something different with it. Maybe you want to make like a remix of your song and you want to rerun this MIDI, these MIDI notes, like if we go to the track up here and we find it, if I can, there we go. So here we can see the MIDI notes, um, just in case you want to have this and then of course you can change all sorts of different settings on your gear and completely change the sound or change the preset or change whatever uh, patch you made and it'll be a completely different sound using the same pattern that you already made. But let's look at how we go from point A, uh, like from the beginning to the end of getting MIDI gear recorded into your tracks. So we're going to go back to main here. We're gonna start on a fresh track, seven is unused. We're gonna choose our MIDI gear, just like this. We're going to make sure that we set the MIDI channel. This is important. Channel is whatever channel your gear is set to. So setting the channel uh, on get different gear, it has a different thing. Like in here, I go into the settings, and then I go into MIDI, and then I choose the channel. On there, there's a button combination that I press to go to global, and then one of these things here says, uh, there's a kitty on my Moog. Get down. There's a setting that says uh, MIDI, and then I can set the channel on here. Same thing with here. I can go to the settings and set the MIDI channel. So just remember what channel you set your MIDI gear to. This one is channel 5 because it's the fifth one within my route. My latest synth, so it's the, the highest number. So this one's channel 5, but then... Hi, Peaky. What are you doing? <laughs> but then uh, you also have to make sure that on here you've got MIDI port A... B, and remote. I don't know what remote is, I've never used it. Maybe Bluetooth, MIDI over Bluetooth or something. So MIDI A, that is the, the right channel here. MIDI A, like you've got two jacks back here on the MPC Live, one's A and one's B, so you just gotta remember which direction is going to what, or, or where you've got things routed. So I've got all of this gear routed to MIDI A, so I've set this to MIDI A. MIDI channel one is the wrong synthesizer. I think MIDI channel one is maybe this guy right here. If I go to MIDI channel two, oh, sorry guys. If I go to MIDI channel two, this is the war with the cats. Then I'll hear another synth, very low. Channel three, another synth, four, and channel five. Okay, that's the synth we want to work with. Now, remember, if you want to hear the synthesizer that you are like trialing, you have to make sure to go into audio right here and turn this guy to in. Turn this little white thing to in. There are three settings on it, I believe. There's, oh, I keep touching that knob. There's off, in, 
and auto. Auto will allow you to hear, well, it, once it's finished recording, it'll let you hear it again. Um, best to just set it to in, then you can hear, oh, I'm not hitting the mini on, it's gotta go back into the screen. Then you can hear what you're uh, playing on the pads down here. Of course, you can have some external MIDI device plugged into the, um, the MPC Live, and then, let's turn that down. This is controlling this right here. So is that. Okay, so those are both plugged into the MIDI ins, but you can always also just use the pads. And uh, we'll talk, in another video, I'll talk about pad perform and what it does. But that's super powerful. Pad perform is awesome, especially if you're not a professional keyboardist. There are so many settings, but that's another video. Let's get back on, on the subject here. So we're on MIDI, we've got MIDI, MIDI channel five, we're MIDI port, port A, and we wanna record something. Now let's say you just wanna record a bass line. This is something that you don't need to change a whole bunch. You can just put it over and over again in each sequence. So what you're gonna to need to do is hold shift and go to note repeat, do this one-handed. Okay, then you choose your time divisions. You've got 1 8 1 16 32, 64, and so on. Now, if you want to do chords and stuff like that, you need to click on ARP right here. You need to make sure that it's set to note repeat. That's just like, actually it's still set to that. No velocity has play, let me just see here. Set up latch notes, I gotta remember this here. Um, action, note repeat. There is a way to set it so that it doesn't do that. It shouldn't be doing that. Rhythm pattern. There we go, yeah. So if I set it to as, uh, like, note repeat, then it'll do chords and stuff like that. Whatever keys you press, it'll just do it to the time division. If you set it to ARP, it's going to, it's going to do that. But this screen is also useful if you want to do lower than one eighths, so you want to go to one quarters or one ones. So sometimes you want things like the beat to just go oosh, oosh, oosh. So you need it to be like that. But otherwise, uh, when you just click on, let me just exit out of here. When you just click on shift and note repeat, then it's going to give you eight, 16, 32, whatever. We're going to set it to 16 on this one. Okay, because we're going to do a very basic bass, okay? Got to go to a lower bank. There we go, that sounds like a happy little tune. So, I'm going to make sure I mute my other tracks, otherwise this is going to sound really weird. So let's get out of here again. Uh, let's go to 6, and mute, and... Three and mute, I just muted those, okay? That way we're not gonna hear those ones in here, we're just gonna make a quick bass line, okay? I've already got a beat in here, if you hear it. Or maybe I don't, I think I just muted that track. Let's see here. Uh, two, I've got to mute, and three, I've got to unmute. Here's my beat, here's my beat. I'm gonna get organized, I swear. There we go. So we've got a basic beat, now we want a bass line. So let's go back to seven that we were working in. Seven's all set up. Channel five, MIDI port A. But it's not doing the note repeat. Hold shift, press note repeat. Choose your division. One eighth sounds good. One sixteenth sounds good too. If you want like a like synth wave, then There we go. So we're gonna record this, all right? This is not going to record into the audio track. This is just going to record the MIDI. So click record, plus pray start, plus pray start, yeah. Okay, good enough. It's not perfect, but good enough. So, how do we get this as an audio track and not staying as a MIDI track? Well, it's quite easy. This is gonna keep playing as long as it's not muted, right? As long as it's not muted, it's gonna keep playing this. So, we go over to audio right here. Audio is armed, it's set to in. What we're going to do is click record and play start and let it play one full cycle and then stop it.
Okay, so it's done a full eight bars. That's what this is set to. It's done a full eight bars. That means it's fully recorded. Now we go back to uh, the MIDI over here. We mute the audio track. Let's name this MIDI bass. I'm gonna have to look at the screen here. MIDI bass. Let's call it MIDI bass two because I already have MIDI bass. So MIDI bass two, do it. Then we go to track eight, which is unused. We're gonna try to change this to a program. And we've got this all open here. It's like the default screen. We go to, see it's set to program one right here. Uh, special note to this, uh, if you're going to do recordings of your MIDI gear into your uh, MPC Live, I recommend putting each um, MIDI recording, like each audio recording that you just did, in its own program if you want to put effects on it. So if you want to change it at all, uh, I recommend giving it its own program. But if you just want to play them as they sound, then you can put them all in the same program. So for example, let's go back to bank one here. This is important because if we go to assign samples, like look here, you've got these two listed right here, means I've used them. But back there, I was using like a higher octave to do the bass. And then I go to my program one and I think, what? I thought I already assigned a couple samples. Oh, right. It's because this has to be sent to bank one. Anyway, we've got that there. We've got two samples from before. That's from the project I'm actually working on. But let's scroll down here. There's this, the sample that we just made. So we go here. We assign it just by clicking on the data knob. We go to main right here. We, let's see, what are we on here? Is everything all set? Looks like it. We click record, play start. We're assigned to here. My timing was a little off on there, but it's already set to division, like to time division, so it should have put it in the right place for me. Let's just press play. Yep. Everything's okay. It's gonna work out anyway. I shouldn't sing. <laughs> okay, so you've now got that MIDI track playing in track A as a recording. This is really great for like something that you want to record in there, like a bass line. And if you don't need the bass line to constantly be like changing and whatnot, uh, just to be some simple MIDI thing going over and over again, uh, then it's great for that. Of course, if you want to have like multiple different, um, like let's say you want to uh, make a melody that plays and you want the melody to kind of like change a bit, like doing a filter sweep or having LFOs changing the shape over more than just eight bars, not just the same eight bars going over and over again. In that case, this copying and repeating is not gonna be so effective, uh, but for something simple like the bass line or even a melody that you don't care so much about changing and stuff like a background melody, then you can just record it once and you're good to go. Of course, if I were to do this here, whoops, what did I just do? Exporting, that's nice. If I were to do this here and then copy the sequence to sequence two, let's do it. Okay, and then we get out of here. Our uh, sequence is exactly the same. The second sequence is exactly the same as the first. So we could actually mute this, go back to track seven, unmute this, change some stuff on here, like maybe, uh, let's, let's just play it real quick. Um, I'm not actually making any changes right there. Why? It is playing that audio. Oh, I see why. Because I need to erase this. Do it. I forgot about that. You need to erase uh, the audio track one. Otherwise, it's going to keep playing the audio recording. If I play now... Not sure how well you could hear it on the speakers, but I was doing a filter sweep and you could actually hear it. So I could actually re-record um, with the filter sweeps and stuff like that. The MPC Live will record those changes that I did and then I can re-record the audio and put it into a, a new track in here. Go back into here and put it into a new track. I could call this um, uh, Poly Bass 2 and then have some change or variance or like 
I would probably wouldn't change the bass, but a melody, if you want to have some kind of a filter sweep or some difference from the first sequence. Remember, we're on sequence one right now, or sorry, sequence sequence two right now. Sequence one is already recorded and set to play, and sequence two, we could just replay the MIDI there, but doing stuff on the actual device as it plays and having that recording instead. So it's a lot more effective for having change and variance. Anyway, that is pretty much all I need to say in this video. I hope you guys found it useful. I hope it wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you guys very much for watching. This is Katekus, out.